It's another edition of the UTPA Baseball Show. My name's Jonah Goldberg. This is the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only head coach of the UTPA Baseball team, Manny Mentrana. Hello, Jonah. <laughs> well, welcome back, Coach. Uh, I've been on the road for a few days now. Uh, weekend series up at Lamar. Uh, took the first game 4-1, to one, dropped the second game 5-3, and the third 7-0. And uh, in, all the, in all the games, there was one thing that was incredibly common. It was the first few innings, nobody seemed to score runs. And then in the late innings, that's when the runs scored. Yeah, it was it was uh, kind of like the Texas game, man. We had to, uh, on Tuesday we had to go uh, down to Austin, and we came back, uh, practiced a couple of days, uh, and then took off to Beaumont. But uh, you're right, uh, all four games uh, very very similar. Uh, early in the game, there was not a whole lot of uh, action going on. Most of the action happened late in the game. In the first game, Sam Street did what Sam Street does. He pitched a complete game. He struck out nine and allowed just nine base runners. You know what? He was uh, again. Uh, he was being uh, the dominant uh, pitcher that uh, that we've come to uh, to expect on Friday nights. He threw really well. He scattered his hits, uh, Jonah. And I thought the uh, the big inning was uh, I want to say it was the uh, the second or third inning when he had bases loaded, uh, the second inning actually, uh, nobody out, um, and he really uh, uh, he bore down and he only allowed uh, one run. Anytime uh, that your pitcher uh, has bases loaded with nobody out. Um, Nobody outs, and I mean, no outs, and he only allows one run. That he did an outstanding job, and I thought that was a difference in the game. And he's been in with you in Division One for over a year now, uh, so I'm sure people have seen him pitch, and these teams that are facing you can probably find video. So, what is he doing so well that even if they have an idea of what might be coming or what it'll look like, at least people still can't hit him. You're absolutely right. At, at the Division One level, I think the the thing that's different at this level, Jonah, is the uh, scouting reports. As soon as you finish playing a team, the your next opponent, the, you know, he they're calling the team you just played for a scouting report. So everybody knows uh, about everyone. Everybody knows about Sam. Um, I think what makes Sam uh, makes him so effective. Number one, uh, he's tough to get uh, hard contact off of. I mean, his balls. Every time he throws a fastball, his ball really, really moves. Uh, so number one is the movement. Number two is he's got very good control. I mean, his strike zone is uh, basically from the bottom of the knees to the top of the knees, um, and very hard to square up that way. So when you have movement, you have good control. Now he's got the uh, the breaking ball again that he can control, and now he's got the changeup. I think all those factors, when you put them together, uh, make up why he's uh, he's he's one of the best pitchers in the country. And the team always seems to get him exactly the number of runs he needs. You know, it was four runs this past Friday, and they get him the runs he needs to win. Do you think that there's anything where the hitters know Sam's on the mound, that they they feel like, okay, we have a chance, we really have a great chance to win today. we got to make sure we get him something. It's no, uh, you know, it's, it's funny you say that because today, obviously, the weather uh, was not uh, conducive to practicing. So we had a meeting with the guys. Um, and, you know, we need to understand, and our players need to understand that uh, we play differently. Um, with Sam. I mean, obviously we know he can pitch, so the guys play a little bit differently. They have a little bit more of a swagger to them as opposed to when somebody else is on their mind. So what we're trying to make them understand is, you know, you, we need to have the same confidence regardless. Uh, if Sam's on the mound or anybody else is on the mound, we have to play that way. Um, but, you know, when you got a guy like Sam that, uh, you know, we know, uh, obviously our players know that, uh, you know what, he's going to keep us in the game. He's going to do a good job and, you know, we have a chance to win. Um, they play in a, in a little bit different fashion and, and what we're trying to make them understand is regardless of who's on, who's on the mound that's how we need to play day in and day out. You know it's interesting uh, that you brought that up uh, in the meeting because you know if you were to look at the starting rotation ERA I mean, it's it's like one. Uh, your starters don't allow anything they never do. I mean Matt Harrell five shutout innings, Andrew Padron one earned in four and two-thirds uh, this weekend alone and then you know, you go back further, Alex Henson had the shutout ball against uh, for six innings against Texas. Blake English and Sam Street threw shutouts the weekend before. Um, and, you know, Padron and Harrell were really good, too. So uh, it, your starters never allow anything. And it's amazing that, you know, we talk about Street all the time, and deservedly so. But really, every pitcher you're, th you're putting out there is putting up zeros. You know what, I, I think the, the reason um, a lot has talked about Sam Jonah is because obviously he did it all last year. Um, and this year, you know, his three outings have been, uh, I mean, have been really, really good. Um, Matt Harrell has done a good job. Uh, I think our freshman, uh, Andrew Padron, has done a good job. Um, Alex Henson, when we started him, he's done a good job. Our starters, for the most part, have done a nice job. Um, it's been the bullpen that's kind of let us down a little bit. Um, 
So we've kind of moved some guys around. Obviously, as, as a coach, now you see that happening. You have to change uh, the way you manage. Uh, we were hoping to get uh, short enough the game for the other team, you know, basically have our starter go six innings and then bring in a guy in the seventh, another one in the eighth, and another one in the ninth. And we've tried that early, but it hasn't worked. Uh, so now we're just kind of changing things around a little bit where we're going to let our starter go a little bit deeper um, and maybe just use one guy to the bullpen to throw one inning or two. Um, but our starters, like you said, have done an, an excellent job of keeping us in the game, uh, you know, doing what they need to do to give us a chance to, to win. Um, we just have to fix the bullpen, and that's something that uh, going into uh, UTSA tomorrow and then Arlington Baptist on the weekend, um, we're going to reshuffle the lineup and, uh, and uh, put different guys in different roles. Uh, Blake English uh, came out of the bullpen this weekend. Uh, is that a role you envision for him being more of uh, like what, a, a relief ace type guy? Yeah, I think, you know, in, in junior college, he was a closer. He was a reliever. Uh, we thought when we bought him here uh, in the fall, he showed that he can uh, throw three pitches over, uh, you know, for strikes. What you want in a starter, obviously, is a guy that can get three pitches over um, and control, you know, his fastball, breaking ball, changeup. He showed he can do that. But we've been having so many problems coming out of the bullpen, Jonah, that we decided to take one of our better arms as a starter and put him in the closer role uh, because we know when, when he comes in, he's going to throw strikes. Um, you know, he's not going to walk a lot of guys. And uh, he's, he's going to, chances are, he's going to bring, bring us home the win. So with English, it was not a case of him not performing well as a starter, because he did. It was more of a case, you know, we need a guy to come in from the bullpen if we have a one-run lead to hold that lead so that we can close out the game and, uh, and win, the, win the ball game. And because he's stretched out, is this kind of situation where maybe he goes two or three innings to get a save? You know what, we have to be careful on the weekends with that when, once the WAC weekend begins. Because you don't want to use them too much on, you know, Friday night, let's say. Mm. Not that Sam needs any help. But <laughs> if we use them too much early, we're not going to be able to get him. But he, he's a guy that can probably throw an inning on Friday, an inning on Saturday, maybe one or two innings on Sunday or vice versa. One or two Friday and then one and one. So we have to be careful how we use him uh, because we know he can close. He's done it uh, at the junior college level. Um, mm. And we're, uh, we're expecting him to, uh, to do it again here at this level. Yeah, it's an interesting situation where uh – where if it's late and you want to bring him in, you have to think about tomorrow, even though, well, you may not have a safe situation tomorrow, but if you do, then you're going to be kicking yourself if you used him for four innings to get a save. Exactly right, exactly right. You know, it's, and it's different going into that last Sunday game. You know, if he's just thrown an inning or two, then that's yeah. perfect because, okay, you know what? You know, Tuesday we might have a midweek game, but it's not a conference game. So we have to be smart. Um, you know, if we have to use him Friday, we're going to have to use him. The good thing is usually Sam um, really takes us almost, you know, seven, eight, you know, nine innings most of the time. So that's, that's the positive, uh, but we just have to be smart to make, uh, make sure that, hey, if, if we have a chance to win, we want to win, but not at the expense of losing him for the entire week. And so that's, you're absolutely right. It's that fine line where, you know what, he might not, we might not need him tomorrow, but how about if we do? So um, we're going to, you know, if we have a chance to win Friday and we feel that Sam is running out of gas, we're going to stick him in the game um, and the same on Saturday, and then we'll worry about the following day whenever that comes along. Street, one of only uh, two players in the NCAA right now with uh, two complete games. That gave about 10 for his career. And uh, what I love about what you're doing with him is uh, you're proving why pitch count is meaningless. Well, you know what? Whoever came up with that number 100, that's one thing. Uh, I'm a little old school. Um, whoever came up with 100, I, you know, how they came up with that number, I have no, no idea, Joan. I think <laughs> if your pitchers are well conditioned, um, I think if they have good mechanics and I think if they feel good, um, it's not so many the amount, but how they how they got there. Um, so you know, Sam and you know, minimal. I mean, he's he throws minimal pitches every inning. Um, he's well conditioned, good mechanics. He feels strong. Um, so you know, if there's nobody better in the bullpen, and he's you know he's feeling well, he's conditioned to go 120, 130 pitches. I don't see why not. And I think that's one thing that uh, in the past few years with uh, with the Rangers, for example, since Nolan Ryan came in. Uh, you know, he hasn't thrown more. Uh, you know, you look at you look back in the uh, in Asia with those uh, with those pitchers, those Japanese pitchers. I mean, their bullpens are hundreds of pitches, and they throw pitches. I mean, their warming up process is incredible. It's a little bit hard for us here in this country to to kind of get our, our 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 hands around that and, and wrap our hands around it. But they do throw a lot of pitches, and you know what? They come in here and they're, and they're healthy. Um, so, you know what? If he's throwing well. Um, and he's well conditioned, and our pitchers are well conditioned. You know what? If he has 110, 111 pitches going into the, into the ninth inning, you know, if he feels good, we're going to throw him out there. Yeah, I mean, as long as he, I mean, he's conditioned to throw 140 on a weekly basis, and 
I think that's the reason guys get hurt with heavy pitch counts these days is because they're not conditioned to do it and then they do it once and oh my goodness and it really wasn't that long ago guys I mean I remember it when I was growing up I remember Al Leiter throwing 142 pitches in game five of the World Series against the Yankees and on the 142nd pitch Louis Soho you know grounded a single up the middle to score two runs and give the Yankees the win. That, that, that one hurt but yeah you're absolutely, you're absolutely right I mean um, you know back in back in you know, in those days, you know, the, your starter was, you know, he, he felt like he didn't do a job if you took him out of the game early. Uh, but, but the game has changed. Again, now the number 100 seems to have a lot of significance. Um, I, for one, don't believe in that. I think, um, again, you have to know your pitcher, how he got to that number, how yeah. his conditioning has been, how he feels. And, again, once you have a player um, and you have him, you know, week after week, you're able to kind of monitor his throwing, understand, and, you know, what he needs to come back, um, how he feels. So, you know, that number to me, 100, uh, you know, it's irrelevant. It's more how you get there. Obviously, if you get too close to 100 in four innings, that's a different story. But yeah. if you're throwing, you know, 10, 12, 13 pitches an inning and you're conditioned for it and you feel good, I don't see any problems with it. And on Friday, Street just kept throwing strikes. I mean, 139 total pitches, 102 of them were strikes. Yeah, it was amazing. That's, you know what, that's, that's unbelievable. Um, when I saw that, when they gave me the, uh, uh, the stat sheet at the end of the game and I saw 102 strikes, that's, that's unbelievable. But again, that's one of the things that he does really, really well. He throws strikes, and not only strikes, but basically his strike zone is at the knees. Um, and then when you have that much movement, you're able to control the movement, both the inside and outside, Jonah. Um, he's really, really effective, and he's one of those guys that he's just very, very hard to square up a ball. And, uh, you know, looking at uh, more of the series, I think we, we moved to Saturday. Was, was that when you had the, uh, the suicide squeeze uh, of Brian Ramirez? I really you, like that play. You know what? We were in, in a 0-0 game. I really thought that game was going to be decided, uh, you know, by one or two runs. And at the end of the day, it was. It was 5-3. So we, we, we tried to, uh, to get that going with Brian. You know, we tried the safety first. That didn't work. And now all of a sudden, they're not expecting the, the suicide. And we did. Um, and we executed it uh, really, really well. Brian did his job. Evan Mason did his. Um, but unfortunately, you know, at the bottom of the, uh, of the inning, we kind of, again, uh, getting late in the game, the seventh inning, it didn't kind of work out for us. Uh, again, it has to be, you have to get guys in there, you know, late in that, uh, in, in the situation where they're able to throw strikes and get guys out. And it was, uh, it was what we were talking about earlier, where our bullpen kind of, you know, kind of let us down a little bit. Um, and we couldn't, um, we couldn't win because I thought that was another game that we should have won. Yeah, Matt Harrell pitched five shutout innings, and you had Tanner Dickerson pitch a scoreless six. And every time Dickerson comes out there, he seems to put up a bagel. You know what? He's not uh, <laughs> a bagel. That's pretty good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's not uh, a hardest thrower, but uh, he has good playing. He keeps the ball down. Jonah gets a lot of ground balls. Has a feel uh, for his changeup. So he's a guy that can come in for one or two innings, um, and he's done a, a tremendous job as a, as a freshman coming in and, and getting some quality innings in for us. In that game, uh, yeah, D Dylan Engelhardt, he had a two-hit game on Friday, and then he followed it up with a three-hit game. That was his first career three-hit game. He had a red-hot weekend. You know what? I, uh, I thought uh, this, this weekend um, Dylan gave us the, uh, the most competitive of, of bats consistently than any other player we've had. Um, I thought he was really, really good. Um, he works extremely hard. Uh, he's a terrific student. He's a 3.7, 3.8 uh, GPA um, in business and finance. So, um, you know, his hard, hard work is paying off. Uh, I think we, with him, a couple of mental adjustments, um, I think it's really, really he's figured it out. Um, and we're hoping that he stays uh, hitting the ball the way that, uh, that he did this past weekend. A couple of doubles uh, to boot with all that. And then, you know, on uh, Sunday, not a lot of hits, but one guy who did get a hit was uh, Omar Avila, and that was his first career hit. Must be a special moment. You know what, any time they get the, the, the hit, but uh, we give him a ball. Um, that was kind of an iffy call. He got jammed a little bit, a um, little blooper uh, in front of the shortstop. And, you know, they have turf in the infield. They have an infield turf at Lamar and a and nat natural grass in the outfield. So it could have gone either way. Um, they gave him a hit. But uh, I'm going to wait till you know, for his, for his hit, whatever that may be next. You know, obviously, if, if it's not iffy, I, I'd rather him you know, remember the first hit as a line drive than a, than a jam shot to the shortstop <laughs> that, the, uh, that the scorekeeper said was a – was a hit, but it's always good. You know, a lot of our freshmen already, Victor Garcia, Blake Thomas, Brian Stuntz, all those guys have had their first hit. Um, Andrew Padron as a pitcher has had their first win. So, you know, once that happens, we, we call time, ask the umpire to give us the ball, um, and then we give it to them in front of the team. So it's, it's always good to have the freshmen do that um, and, you know, give them something to remember that first win or that first hit um, for the rest of their lives. Forget the first hit. How about so, you should be giving Victor Garcia a junior ball, uh, ball for his first walk. 
He's got uh, nine walks this season. He ranks 68th in the nation in walks. You know what? He's going to be a really, really good player. Um, as a freshman, we've had him hitting third. We've had him hitting fourth. Um, um, but with him defensively, even if he goes over for four, Jonah, his, uh, his glove around first base is really, really uh, uh, outstanding. Um, best defensive first baseman I've had in my 18 years as a collegiate head coach, and he's only a freshman. Um, so he's going to get better. He's another one that's a tr you know, tremendous, tremendous worker. Uh, great work ethic, uh, great character, um, and we're looking for some some big things from Victor um, in his years here at Penn Am. Uh, Andrew Padron uh, started uh, at Lamar on Sunday, and you know four and two thirds. He didn't walk anybody, allowed just one earned. He did. He did okay. You know what? Uh, we did something on Sunday that uh, we haven't done all all year, um, and that's I mean our, our our defense has been really solid. I mean we were. Uh, including Sunday, and we made three errors. We we're fielding at about a 974, 975 clip. In college baseball, anything around a, above a 965 or so, you know, you're pretty good defensively. When you're in the 970s, you're very good defensively. Unfortunately for Andrew, um, Sunday happened to be the day where we booted three balls, yeah. um, which we have not done. I mean, the first couple games, um, you know, or, or the season, I should say, the first few games, we've had, you know, no errors, one error. But this was the first game that we've had three errors. And unfortunately, uh, Andrew was on the mound, but he was able to kind of finagle his way out. And, and overall, he threw pretty well. Yeah, that's two starts now uh, for Padron. And, you know, he's, he's, he, may be, he may be a freshman on the, uh, on the roster card, but he doesn't look like one out there. No, he's, uh, he's a tremendous competitor. You're absolutely right. And that's one of the things uh, when we went to see him pitch last year a couple of times that uh, really impressed us with Andrew was his competitiveness um, and how he gets after hitters. Uh, and you know he's continued that at this level. Sometimes you get a freshman; they're a little bit, a uh, little bit nervous, a little bit shy. You know, Division One baseball, uh, but not uh, not uh, Andrew. Andrew's gone out there and really, really competed well for us. And there's another one that um, would be a great arm, um, depending on how things shake, you know, shake out uh, with the uh, conference weekend starters. Um, if he's in the bullpen in English, we have English in the bullpen. That's a good, that's a good one-two combo. Yeah, I mean, really, no matter what happens, I mean, you've got. You know, English is, you know, in the bullpen now, so you still have four uh, really strong starters for the three spots uh, in WAC play. And no matter who ends up in the bullpen, I mean, that's really just going to strengthen you at the end of the game and uh, really uh, could lead towards a really strong WAC season. Yeah, and that's, and that's what we need. We need to have three solid starters uh, that can really, you know, get us uh, and keep us in games. And then when you have the lead late in the game, you want some guys out of the bullpen that can hold that lead. So um, this is probably the last weekend that, you know, we're, we're doing that. Um, spring break is going to be tough for us next week. Uh, obviously, we go to uh, College Station for two games, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then um, we keep uh, we follow that up. We stay on the bus or stay at College Station and then go to uh, Stillwater to play Oklahoma State. Um, both of those teams are ranked. They're quality teams, um, good players, good coaches. So it'll be important for us to get that you know our rotation going, our bullpen going, uh, to make sure that when we open up here against New Mexico, uh, New Mexico State, uh, we're ready to go. Well, the Bronx uh, face Arlington Baptist this weekend. I mean, that, that's a team you've faced each of the last two years and uh, have won uh, pretty convincingly uh, against them. Uh, what do you think of the, the matchup coming this weekend? What does playing a team like them allow you to do uh, with uh, your roster? Well, obviously tomorrow uh, it's, it's, it's oh, going to be UTSA. good. Yeah, good for us tomorrow <laughs> uh, because, you know, this is uh, Alex's second start. We want to see uh, how he does the second time. Uh, Obviously, he threw all of Texas, but this is a different week, a different team. Um, Arlington Baptist, you know, the, from the first year we played them to last year, they've improved. Um, they're not uh, Oklahoma State or Texas A&M, but, you know, their players have, you know, gloves and bats. And in baseball, if you get that, that, that pitcher that does, you know, pitches really well that, uh, that day or that night, anything can happen. So we're not taking anybody lightly. Um, the, the message we're sending our guys is, you know, respect everyone. Um, but make sure that we're not overconfident. And on the other hand, we're going to respect everybody the same, but making sure that, hey, we don't, we're not afraid or we're not scared of anybody or their tradition or their reputation. So with us is we want them to play the game. Um, instead of the, you know, the opponent, let's concentrate on what we can do as far as you know, fielding the ball, throwing it accurately, hitting it hard, and outrunning the baseball. Um, so we're, we're focused on that. Um, we're not going to be too overconfident, but on the other hand, you know, when we, like when we stepped in, on the field at Texas, or we're going to step on College Station, or Oklahoma State. Uh, we're not going to we're not going to be intimidated by them either. Okay. Well, Bronx are at UTSA, 4 p.m. on Wednesday, 
Then they host uh, Arlington Baptist 7 o'clock on Friday, 6 o'clock on Saturday, 1 o'clock on Sunday. And of course, that Sunday game, as with all of our Sunday home games this season, if you bring four non-perishable food items, you get them free. All the donations benefit the Food Bank RGV, so it stays local, helps to feed those in need. Uh, and if you, if you have a family of 12, you can bring 48 non-perishable food items and you can get them all in for free and so on let's and so forth. Let's strike out hunger in the valley. So if, uh, yeah, if you can, please bring those perishable uh, uh, foods or cans. Uh, we'll really help those in that, uh, that are in need. He's Manny Mantrana. He's the head coach of the UTPA baseball team. My name's Jonah Goldberg. We'll see you back here next week on 956sports.com.